Trying to stay up with my passions. I feel you. I mean, you already got the hoodies and the merch. I mean, what's next? What else? Well, I am working on something right now. I got some tracks with I'm trying to get out here. And I'm trying to stay up. My pops was never there for me, so I try to make sure I'm nothing short of legendary. Yeah. But my negative thoughts come from my past. Memories that I have of my mother and things I've seen from my dad. No explicit details because both are warriors and still fight like comrades. My negative thoughts come from my dad. Visual explanation of love I have never had. Love that was given that I should have received. Bought in by lust, drugs, and preached greed. Shambled by curiosity and curios. He said, I loved you. But did you mean it, though? I should have received, but now I'm searching to find love in a loveless person. To say mint words, but I'm always cursing. To read people rather than Bible verses. You know what? I should have bought your love and sold it to the highest bidder. It would have been my mother. Lord knows she's not a quitter. Lord knows he was her splinter. Lord knows he could have killed her. My negative thoughts come from her. Because her fought harder than he. And she wanted we. He wanted he. They made me. Now me is mean all because he wants to put his eye in team. Wants to give his love a different dream. Fill skirts with different scenes. Nicer cars with higher beams. Wore a suit just to make things seem that he could out-preach his own reality. My negative thoughts still come from her. Her hurt. Her pain. He hurt her heart. Her, like Eve, came from a common part. Relation to anatomy. She gave him a rib and he took her whole heart. But sometimes to climb high, you encounter some little splinters. You climb to see the top, but they never mention it was just a picture. They never mention you won't get richer, make the babies, and then they ditch you. Now all those sweet words that they pitched you are framed on the coffee table, in a picture, poured out of love from an empty picture. Traditional season for the backdrop, family photo, three kids, one mom, no pops. He up, mic drops, tears stop, no pops. Mind gone, stay strong, just do a little grin and keep pushing on. Three kids, one mom, I'm definitely not alone. Mind gone, you were right. Now prove him wrong. He opted just when I was enough. I misplaced my faith and I thought about giving up. I was no longer motivated on what was going through the motions just because by daily hit the nearest plug to give that spark to my heart that needs a big hug. Yes, your honor, love is a heavy drug. Mentally exhausted to my brain, I'll debug. Reprogram and compile to define a different love. Amusement to a shoulder shrug, to insinuate a gesture nudge to confess. A different love. Walking through the crib, a different love. Walking through the halls, a different love. Walking through the streets, a different love. Walking by me, a different love. Whether conquer or defeat, a different love. Whether converse or don't speak, a different love. Whether you trust in me, a different love. Whether an apology, a different love. Whether six feet deep, a different love. I honestly want honesty and a different love. My negative thoughts come from love. I've never truly experienced it. And when it comes, I try to distance it. I'm mad because of the past, but now I can't find it and I don't want to be last. Stuck in the past, stuck on my ass, man, I just want a different love, Dad. But I won't be mad and I won't seek revenge. Rather than speak, I will study and listen. Rather than scorn, I won't forgive less. For my mother raised me, and she did the best. Man, ordinary ain't no DNA. <laughs> Feel that. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit, let me go prepare for this slam. Hey, 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 bro, what slam you getting ready for? About to head to D-Town Dollar Slam and kill it real quick, man. Yeah? Man, I heard them slams, man. You got to come with it, man. Oh, for sure. But, you know, I stay right. Now my pen stay on fire. Yeah, yeah. So you, have you always been that person, like, just comfortable and can, uh, can command the attention of a room? Back in 2018, not to brag, I was ranked fifth <laughs> in the nation, you know, so I do a little something. Just, just something. a little something. Yeah, just, just a little, little bit. Something. Yeah. You was probably like a super competitive ass little kid, huh? Competitive? That ain't even a word. <laughs> Ever since I was a kid, all I wanted to be was a poetic lyricist. 
Like I had dreams of my pen transforming into a magic wand. I become a master magician, manipulating matter out of misery, making memorable moments manifest instead of meaningless mold and mildew mumble for meritless mouths of mediocre slam poets who I make my music see the trick is to allow your mind to become limitless, create an entire universe from discarded words and broken sentences. I gather stars, place them underneath my tongue, then spit out constellations. The Big Dipper, Northern Star, wedged in between my teeth. I free slaves when I speak, what I mean is, Poetry is the galaxy's favorite form of speech. See, I smoke signs, snort philosophy, geology, Greek mythology. Not even Thor could hammer home the Iron Man if you gave him the Hulk end of the stick using bold words that put all caps in America. I'm an angry black man. Utilize his voice. I caption America to revert back into hysteria. You know the skit row kids made schizos cringe. I'm the love child of Maya Angelou in the 18th letter I cam. I'm literally lyrically crim. Then I crim. Nah, nah, nah. This, this is God, son, like Jesus wearing Tim's, removing his limbs just to showcase his body of art. I don't spit, I vomit, I barf out agony, tragedy, see my palm rights through the lens of Othello's hindsight. That's 1080p HD clarity, so you can see my pain pillaging through pages, soaked in tears and hollow hollows and halos, hanging in inhibited halls of heaven's gateway, see poetry needs nothing but the rhythm of God's heartbeat. And sometimes I feel like I'm doing it wrong. See, I recite on stage, but the trap house is where I should be moving these poems, depending on how the fiends want their high. We can move it by the pound or sell it by the line, take pieces of my broken emotions, stuff them in dime bags, turn them with zigzags, and let you smoke them, nigga. This shit right here, this shit right here is called life. One puff in your ass to start living it. Or you might find inspiration to start your own damn business. This right here is not for the faint of heart. This is grown man business. We poets become Basquiat. Painting suicide on the belly of cumulus clouds, waiting on acid rain to dissolve a decade, a decadency depicted by false lyricists who don't take this craft serious. So if you don't bleed it, I don't believe it. Period. I'm just trying to break the cycle of what anxious menstrual. Wait, see what I did there? Bleed it, period, cycle, menstrual. I give you four to five days to think about it. Give me seven. I write earth in the image of heaven, become the ghost of Nelson Mandela, pivoting like Muhammad Ali while ripping the chainsaw. I would eat the chains off and come back next week just to do it all over again. I tell these poets, when I put my heart to the pen, would y'all really expect to win? What you doing over here? Some merch. Some merch? Yeah. <laughs> you know, all the merch you got? How much merch does an artist need? You got you got that many ideas working in that little head of yours? Leave me alone, milk dude, man. man can you do, you got else to fine, do? fine, fine. I'm gonna go see what Bleak doing uh, since you wanna act all stuffy. It's Saturday, it's Saturday night, man. Somebody gotta get lit with me, man. Yeah, What's up on them yams, though? That's what I'm trying to, trying to, you know, figure out. Yeah. Man, stop all that lying to that girl. <laughs> you caking, man? Who you caking with, bro? Hey, man, not right now, Who you caking? <laughs> Who you caking with, bro? Bro, what you want, man? Hey, man, look, tell her you trying to kick it with the homie, man. Get off the phone. <laughs> bro, get out of here, man. <laughs> what, man? He over here messing with me, man. I'm going to call hey, you back. Tell her to bring some Domino's, some pizza or yeah, something since you want to have a conversation. <laughs> Damn, bro, what's up, man? What's going on? I'm chilling, bro. Huh? What's up? Come, come kick it with me. Everybody downstairs, they practicing and shit, man. They, man, it's Saturday. We need to turn up. Yeah. Man, you know, I got a show tomorrow, bro. I'm not kicking out to practice myself. We all myself. got a show tomorrow. You know your stuff. You've internalized it. <laughs> it's bro, all good. You being sucking down airport right now, bro. <laughs> Look, man, you a pro. You a pro. You got it. You got it. Respect to that, man, but I know what it's like not to have my purpose, bro, and to be wandering around, man, so I'm going to practice. Hearing the echoes of defeat, like a judge slamming his gavel down every time justice tries to speak up for black boys. The courtroom chambers of my existence ruling in favor that my childhood wasn't traumatic enough. I mean, yes, I've been through things like suffering from this crooked posture as I carry my best friend's worlds upon my shoulders. And honestly, I'm not sure if their worlds will ever levitate towards the sky as my legs strain carrying their intentions into my temple. 
I wanted to sing song in my own way. I accepted flesh as weakness as I watched mortal combat, more souls than the spirit ever could touch. I often write scarecrows every night, leaking fear gas out the ink of my pen. And when I think about fear, it reminds me of leaving my mother at the end of every summer. Or being a pastor's son, carrying the burdens of a green leaf. See, I, I knew something about me was different. I actually desired to take on other people's agony. I would carve my initial into the faces of friends whose skin resembled the bark of a beaten tree. So rough on the outside, but so fresh the deeper we chip into the layers. I've shared my home as a safe house with those who were nothing more than my rubber band man at the playground. No Jefferson Pierce to electrify the corruption in these young boys' mind. While hardship, while hardship, release this stack into their nostalgia. Cripping young boys' aspirations into shock. My heart scribbles on chalkboards. A chemist searching for the perfect balance of self-love. All my research calculated theories that other people's crisis was more significant than mine. My t-shirt drenched in the tears of their desertion. I noticed that I would sacrifice father-son bonding time to make sure that my friends without fathers could bond with mine. And then by doing this, I built a cocoon around myself. I knew how to memorize the pages of others, but not that hard to recite my own story. Something like a point guard. I gave the ability to make the extra pass instead of shooting my shot. No wisdom of embracing clutch moments that life had tossed me. I mean, I had, a, I had a mama mentality when it came to visioning my future, but my venom seemed to always be diluted with uncertainty. For some reason, I just couldn't find a way to paralyze the friends I wanted to stay closest to me. I couldn't save them from drowning in a glass cup full of emptiness. I held on to friends who were labeled as thugs and criminals. In the hood, keep sinking, can't seem to get out, but I, I called them my friends, my brothers. The next few years of my journey, I walked through sandstorms, wind whispering, why do you continue to run? Sand dust evading my eyes, wind whispering, why do you continue to walk blind? Dehydrated from doubt, I pray for the smallest drip of water to refresh the thought that I too deserve to be happy on this earth. So I filled my canteen up with dreams, tragedies, and crossed out these and began to write my pages into your history. I began to write. I began to write my story and nobody else's. Let's get on this drink. <sighs> <laughs> Yo, yeah, man. Yeah, it was lit. Hey, it's fresh. Hey, man, hell no, nah, I ain't dealing with that. <laughs> you the director of um, diversity and inclusion, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I, I dig it, man. I think I found my passion. Yeah, yeah. Hey man, I got to deal with a lot of backlash and a lot of heat, but man, it feels it feels good. It's not it's not super simple, but it feels good to do go go to your job every day, man. It feel good about what you're doing, but uh, you know I think I do what I do because it's like nostalgia for me, man. And they say <laughs> they say the definition nostalgia is the return of suffering, right? And the suffering kind of reminds me of something my uncle taught me when I was about about seven or eight. He was teaching me he was teaching me how to play dominoes. <laughs> And, uh, and, you know, I'm trying to figure it out. And he said, uh, you know, with, with, his gold, with, his, with his gold tooth and his taco meat and everything, he got his taco meat out. He kept his taco meat out, always with a fly fedora. That's where I get it from. So, <laughs> hey, hey. So he, he, got his gold, he got his gold tooth and his taco meat. 
and his Newport hanging on his lip like for dear life. And he leans in and he says, hey, nephew, life is a bitch that you're going to have to learn how to live with. And I'm an 80s baby. Came up from Reagan reading Rainbow in the Roots. So watching my prom queen auntie turn fiend and finding out Kuta Kari all had me confused. See, I came from Mike Tyson punch out, Jordan Files with the tongue out. <laughs> Playing hide and go get it, Kool-Aid pickles, Chico sticking, picking my own switches under the street light catching fireflies. <laughs> And then even before the eye of horse, we only knew 007's gold eye and nigga knocking. Remember, nigga knocking. <laughs> nigga knocking. Nigga knocking on doors that only open up from the inside. Nigga knocking on dark skin shellac. See, we're the prime targets in their eyes. Nigga knocking on, on buried emotions. Because playing hard is the only way we was taught to survive. Nigga knocking on hopeful help. But who you gonna call when the police is the ones doing the drive-bys? And class is in. But we got, but the bell went off. But we got hooked. We so cool. As black hosts in Hitler housing. Hunted down like hunting at 18 with his hands held high. Or maybe Hampton at 21 hung while hibernating. Black boys are stamped and hand delivered to manhood with the wrong address. And that's priority black male or black male that's lost sons that never had father figures. So I was obsessed with trying to find father figures. Ironically, we run from babies to birth the opportunity to be father figures. See, we don't know how to play well, build or let go of pain. So we claim blocks, lay bricks and stack bodies like it's a game or maybe or maybe maybe the aftermath of Greenwood. See, our neighborhoods look like mass graves. And you know this black on black crime, right? But if white folks was our neighbors, they'd be victims of the same. Because it's no good mornings while mourning. Then they rook our lost bishops and toss them over the roof while we keep drinking, drinking, drinking the juice. Checkmate, nigga. <laughs> I remember my uncle, you know, I'd be concentrating. And trying to get those 10 dominoes in my head, right? And I'm concentrating. I'm studying, trying to find big six, too. And he looked down at me and said, nephew, study long, study wrong, nephew. Maybe that's what it is. My studious ways. My studious ways help me find my why. Because I teach like I'm chasing the ghosts of educators that I never had. Why I do this work? Because as early as age 12, I dreamt that I woke up to my wake, seeing my mama holding my babies while they scream, why daddy won't get awake. So I'm furious. I'm furious with knowledge. In the kitchen, edging tray up, trying to work awake these ways up, dreaming of ways out, but I still keep dying on Ricky's mama's couch. Why I do this work? Because I still have daymares that night. Bullets with no registered ID entered that hotel suite and checked into my friend Paul's chest. And while his soul is slipping away, I felt the closest to his process that I've ever been. Over burning sands, ice cold chill ran down my back. And my guardian angel was only selfish enough to only have two hands because I, the girl I was dead with knocked me off my feet. As another strange visitor went through her face and out the back of her cheek, her blood soaking me. Her blood soaking me. And I was... And I was wading in still water for 50 miles away. But it's like it's like I can hear my mama screaming waves of God, don't take him right now. I kept those bloody clothes for the next five years. See, they say it's the small things, but it's, I think it's the big things that we forget about. I needed that reminder. It's funny, though. <laughs> it's funny, though. I thought I was escaping all the violence when I ran off to college. Why I do this work? Because I am man articulating the manuscript, Dear Black Boy, breaking out through the universe's third wall when the little black boy hears the height of his possibilities for the very first time. Y'all pray for me, y'all. Because at 36, I'm just kind of finding out that my feelings and this freedom get so expensive. Damn. I'm going to have to pay for these thoughts. So that return of suffering I was talking about, it just reminds me of playing bones with my uncle. And I remember the last thing he told me, he leaned in on me and said, nephew, 
Don't run from the pain. Run towards it. Then he leaned in a little closer and said, nephew, Domino, and wash them dishes. Mac. Oh,